All right, and here we are again, day number 10 in our life challenge, 66 days of data with nine. And today we are going to put all the good things that we have learned yesterday and the day before into good nine practice. We're going to install an extension. You will learn how that goes. It's super easy. We will get to look at a specific node and we're going to look at how we can apply this data that we have basically talked about the last two days um, in NIME and have a look at an interpretation or uh, evaluation, if you want, of our Spotify track data. If you have missed the days before, eight and nine are especially important. I link the video for video number eight at the top here. And uh, if you finish that and want to look at nine, yesterday's video as well, just click the next button. So now let's switch to the screen and have a look at today's task. All right, here we are again. That is the data exploration in 66 days of data with nine page. And this page can be found in the description down below. It's the very first link. And we're in basically uh, section number two, descriptive statistics. We talked about basic statistic measures, mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, range, and quantiles. And we talked yesterday about schooners and kurtosis. And today we're going to learn about the data explorer node to calculate the basis, basic descriptive statistics measures of the data set and tracks. So we don't have to calculate all these formulas by ourselves. We let the machines do the work. All right, so let's get over to nine. Here we are again. Uh, let me just close that and let's just go here. Here we have the data set that we've been working on so far. Let me just quickly clean out the console here and let's have a look again at what is today's task. Learn about the data explorer node to calculate the basic descriptive statistics. So this one is linked and this one leads you to the NIME hub. If you use the NIME hub or if you use that other great site, NotePit is completely up to you. I like both very much. It's basically what you would prefer. So let's just have a look at the NIME hub and here is the data visualizer. So the data, uh, the data visualizer, data explorer. So the data explorer node offers a range of options for displaying properties of the input data in an interactive view. Mm, sounds cool, kind of. We will learn what that means. All right. So um, let's just go to NIME and search for data explorer. Explorer. Oh, wait a minute. It's not there. Hmm, what does that mean? Of course, I have prepared this little little thing here for you. It's not there because we need to install an extension. But which extension and how do we do that? Well, let me show you. So if you look at the NIME Hub page, you can see that the Data Explorer, this is a node as you can see here in the Visualizer section, the Data Explorer comes from the extension NIME JavaScript Views labs that lab part is important you see that it's certified with this little check mark and it comes from nine directly so how do we install an extension we just go to file and then to install nine extensions and then we just write nine java script views and we see two don't want the upper one we want the lower one. It should be exactly the same as in the um, NIME Hub or NotePit description. So we just tick that checkbox, say next. And it basically says, okay, this is what's going to be installed. We have to accept the license agreement here and then click finish. And you see below here, it's installing the software. Then usually as always after nine extension installations it asks us to restart. I say, yes, please restart it. All right, and NIME is restarting. And um, while it does that, we might want to have a look at some of the things we have talked about in the previous days. So let's just, um, have a quick look once again at um, mean, medium and node. So mean 
is most common finding the average median is the, the value that's exactly in the middle and mode is the simply the most popular or most frequent response value then we have range we have standard deviation is the average amount of variability in your data set it tells you on average how far each score lies from the mean and we have variance the variance is the average of scare, squared deviations from the mean. Variance reflects the degree of spread in the data set. So how far spread out it is. So let's just see if NIME has reloaded. Yes, it has. And now we should have the data explorer node in here. So just go to our workflow, click this one double click the data explorer and it auto connects them and we shift over note here if you're a keyboard guy like me how do i do that i hold down shift and control and the right arrow moves it to the right the left arrow moves it to the left so now i want to comment this note evaluate basic statistic descriptive statistics that's what i wanted to say All right, and then we just execute. We, have, we execute and open views. This this node opens several um, statistics in a kind of view or browser mode if you want to, and therefore we not just not say execute, but say execute and open views. And let me show you what this does. Execute and open views. You see, it calculates now. It goes over the data set and calculates all these descriptive statistics, and then it opens this data explorer view. And here we have basically the statistics for each and every column that we have in our um, in our uh, data set. So we could see, for example, if we look at let's say let's look at danceability we have a minimum of, of zero danceability a maximum of 0 0.991 if you remember the range here was from zero to one we have a mean of 0 0.564 we have a standard deviation so how far is each of these 580,000 um data points away from the mean um, that's a 100, uh, 0 0.166. I would say that is a pretty dense whole data set, I would say. I mean, if, if you see that this value, value is a little bit over the middle and that this is true for 580,000 data sets, if you see that the distance of the the average distance <laughs> standard deviation is only 0 0.16 to 0 0.56. I would dare to say that this is a quite danceable, if you want, data set. And this is where all this mathematics theory, if you want, really starts to make sense from my point of view, right? So um, it, is, it is in regards to danceability, it shows me um, obviously a lot of danceable songs and we can make these um yeah how can we say these these observations for quite a few of these of these um of these values then we have um the variance um that is 0 0.028 so uh, if we just look at the definition again which we had here which said variance is the average of square deviations from the mean yeah that is also pretty low, if you want. Um, still always looking at the danceability, the skewness. Let's just have a look at skewness and, um, what was it, skewness and um, kurtosis. All right, so there was that statement where we said, okay, skewness is between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. The data are nearly symmetrical. So. For the danceability, um, the skewness is minus zero, minus zero point three three one. So that's in the symmetrical range, if you want, because it's between minus zero point five on the lower end and zero point five at the upper end. Minus zero point three three one is a little bit above minus zero point 
five. So also quite symmetrical data set and the kurtosis. Let's just have a look at the kurtosis. Um, so um, mesocortic is the same as a normal, which means kurtosis is near to zero. So um, this one is also not very far away. Um, it's it's um, currently it's a negative, which means it's maybe let me just see. I guess it's a little bit flatter than average if I got it right. So we're always looking at the danceability. And this is where these these descriptive statistics really come into play. Let's just quickly have a look at some other things here. These are for all the numeric values. We also have, of course, um, five columns with non-numeric values. We have dates or artists. So you cannot make any number calculations on these. So these are the so-called nominal columns. And here is a data preview. So we could also work in that table, but I don't want to click on that little plus icon right now because that's tomorrow's task. One thing I'd like to show you, let's just uh, close this one out here and get back to nine. I also wanted to show you quickly that you basically can also export this and um, yeah, basically um, have some settings. So how do you get here to the configuration window? Either double clicking or right click and say configure. And um, you can basically set up the um, settings here. So you can say, we're looking tomorrow we're lo uh, um, or later on, we are looking at uh, histograms. Um, but uh, we can set some, some uh, interesting stuff here. We could give it a title, okay. Descriptive statistics, Spotify, data set from Kaggle. Um, we could, for example, increase or decrease the decimal places if we if we wanted to have um, more, we could um, work a little bit on the table here. So let's just basically re execute and open views again. And now we would see that the um, the table now has um, this uh, heading here as well. So that is probably something if someone prepares something for you and that is that is something um, you can basically do in all data explorer uh, views so that's also something i wanted to show you so that is it for today tomorrow we will continue with this little journey into descriptive statistics but we will look at the interactive view of the data explorer nodes. We were going to look at the average popularity of the songs in the data set, the highest densibility, how many missing values in the feature key and so on and so forth. Uh, um, and we can, we will also um, uh, basically look a little bit about what happens um, if we exclude a column in the interactive view. All right, so that happens tomorrow on uh, Sunday. Before we close this section here with talking on Monday about zeros, missing values, infinity, and not a number. It's also something we are going to find at least partially in the um, in the uh, Data Explorer node. That's it for today, my good friends. We will see each other tomorrow. If you don't want to miss out, make sure to hit like and subscribe because it definitely helps to um, uh, foster the algorithm. It helps the channel. It m helps me to create more of this stuff for you to go through this challenge together with you. And maybe together we have some nice learnings. I highly appreciate that. Thanks a lot. So I keep these videos for free for you. I, I would highly would appreciate a subscription or a like or a comment if you want to tell me how I'm doing. And I'm looking forward to see you tomorrow on day number 11 of 66 days of data with Naim. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.